Hello everyone and welcome to a game or rather a video where I will tell you something about the candidates, the candidates tournament and we're gonna check out a few games between the candidates they have played uh, so far against each other. Uh, so it's the 13th of June that the, the candidates tournament starts on the 16th of June, that's actually my birthday so you know it's always nice when things work out but the first game of the candidates will start on the 17th of June. Now who are the candidates and where is it being played? Uh, the candidates tournament is being played in Barcelona in Spain uh, and it will be played in Palace of Santona if I'm pronouncing that right you can see it uh, right here it is absolutely beautiful uh, I mean I can't even imagine playing chess in in such a place um, I mean look uh, we can just marvel at it and uh, so I, I really like the um, uh, venue that FIDE has chosen for uh, for this uh, grand event as it is the greatest tournament uh, that uh, you know the, there ever was and will be it is the tournament where the winner will get a chance to face uh, the world champion Magnus Carlsen for the title of world classical champion and usually it's okay to be second in a tournament it's okay to be third but here in the candidates tournament it really really stings if you get uh, second place like in, in the candidates tournament you don't really care if you're second or last uh uh, only the the first uh, place really matters and uh, of course everyone will uh, will fight for it so if you if you are from uh, Spain or even better from Barcelona you can uh, check it out I'm sure it will be open for viewers I don't know maybe they will be uh, maybe they will charge some tickets maybe not but um, uh, you know it would be it, it would definitely be a, a great place to meet the one of the candidates or maybe even all of them uh, you know maybe get a photo with them maybe get an autograph um, if you guys are interested in that so that's uh, the venue and these are the candidates. So as you can see, uh, the candidates are Ding Liren, uh, Lireza Firuja, Fabiano Caruana, Jan Nipomnishi, Richard Rapport, uh, Hikaru Nakamura, uh, Timur Rajabov and Jan Shishtov Duda. Uh, and of course, uh, if you guys are interested in how all of them qualified, uh, Nepo, of course, uh, Jan Nipomnishi qualified by being the runner-up of the World Championship 2021. He played the World Chess Championship match against Magnus Carlsen. Uh, he lost, but uh, he gets an automatic ticket to the next candidates tournament. Then then you have uh, Rajabov who qualified for the previous candidate tournament but he dropped out he didn't want to play due to uh, the COVID breakout and uh, FIDE has uh, awarded him sort of uh, he, he's nominated by FIDE uh, to get uh, a direct um, uh, entrance into the next candidates tournament because uh, MVL took his place in, in the previous one. Uh, then you have Yang Shishtov Duda uh, the top, uh, one of the top two finishers of the Chess World Cup 2021 second one being Sergei Karyakin but he was disqualified and Ding Lee uh, takes Karyakin's place um, uh, as a replacement as, as he had the highest uh, rating in classical chess for May 2022. Uh, that was the, the criteria, if you guys remember, Ding had to play like, uh, I think it's 34 games, maybe it's 32 or something, to, uh, just simply because he didn't have enough classical games to, to actually qualify for the event. Then you have the two top finishers uh, in the FIDE Grand Swiss Tournament of 2021, that's Alireza Firuja and Fabiano Caruana. Uh, Alireza being the winner and Fabiano being the runner-up and the two top finishers of the FIDE Grand Prix 2022. Uh, being Richard Rapport and Hikaru Nakamura. So it would be, uh, well, of course, it, it, it is going to be absolutely enjoyable regardless of uh, who wins uh, the candidates tournament, but Magnus still uh, hasn't made it absolutely clear if he will play. Uh, should anyone just win the tournament because for for now I believe the information is that he is willing to play Ali Reza. If Ali Reza plays then Magnus uh, will be interested in facing. I, I think it's because he represents the next generation. He's the young one. He's the one that you know re really fights hard. He, he, he wants to be the best. He wants to uh, be the next uh, Bobby Fischer or, or you know uh, I know that he is uh, one of his uh, g greatest role models. Uh, so uh, I think Magnus would be motivated to play against him but it's very very hard to imagine that Magnus would actually drop out of the World Chess Championship cycle and uh, not play Ding, for example, uh, because who 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 wouldn't uh, think Ding to be a, <laughs> a worthy opponent? But yeah, I can um, I see where he's going with this. Alireza is young and uh, he thinks that uh, that would be uh, definitely a match to promote. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I think, uh, for example, if if Nakamura wins the candidates tournament because of his huge online following, uh, I, I think that would be the the most followed event. Uh, not, not just in chess but in you know of all the sports uh, perhaps I mean it would be a, such a spectacle but the, I don't know uh, any any match would be absolutely a, a 
absolutely thrilling to watch. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the um, uh, meet the candidates. If you, if you guys have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments. I will try to address them. And also, if you have a game uh, that was played between the candidates that you would like the uh, you know would like everyone to see, do use hashtag suggestion, suggest the game, and I will try to uh, show it before the actual start uh, of the candidates tournament. Now this is the uh, uh, this is one game I chose. It's from the Tal Memorial, the seventh Tal Memorial in twenty uh, in two thousand and twelve, ten years ago, uh, and uh, it's a game between Teimo Rajao and Hikaru Nakamura. So. Uh, it's the the first one that we're showing and it's uh, it, it just has a really really powerful final move of the game So uh, I, I thought you guys might enjoy this one and it's a blizzard game So we're not gonna over overanalyze it. I already spent quite a lot of time uh, You know telling you about the venue and the candidates and so on uh, So let's dive straight into it uh, Rajabov has the white pieces and he opens with d4 Hikaru goes for the Dutch defense. He plays f5. We have c4 knight to f6 and now knight to c3 We have d6 and now knight to f3, uh, pawn to g6, and now queen to c2. So this is all uh, very, very standard stuff. Uh, bishop to g7 with bishop to g5, and now knight b to d7. And this position has been reached up until that uh, point in 20, uh, 2012, but here after um, uh, Rajabov's h4, it's a new move, so all, now already as of move 7, uh, we have a completely, completely new game. So let's see how Hikaru replies. He just castles, we have pawn to e3 and now queen to e8. Uh, getting away from that uh, from this diagonal and uh, preparing to push e5 the queen will be very useful here uh, but uh, as the queen now left the defense of the c7 pawn Rajabov just plays knight to b5 and it's uh, not the most precise way the most precise is actually h5 because the uh, the queen's absence of the d8 square allows h5 because this is not problematic for black problem is if you play knight captures on h5 which of course is possible now you allow knight d5 because there's no knight here and now this pawn is hanging in this pawn is saying plus you also just gave white in a semi-open h file uh, this will be very very close to winning for white but okay it's a blitz game like i've said knight to b5 going after the weakness of c7 queen to d8 hikaru says all right i've made a blunder or not a blunder i made a slight mistake we have to first defend the pawn then kick away the knight and then move the queen back to, uh, to e8 so okay uh, i've wasted a move so uh, rajab of castle's queen side we have c6 and now knight back to c3 and hikaru goes back queen to e8 uh, we have c5 now uh, putting pressure uh, on the center and now we have pawn to d5 Hikaru closes the center we have bishop to f4 uh, and now pawn to b6 attacking the overextended c5 pawn we have c captures on b6 a captures on b6 and now knight to e5 offering a trade of knights and bishop to b7 Hikaru is also very happy here he now gets the uh, the semi-open a file to, uh, to use for attack and if he can start pushing those queen side pawns he might be able to attack the white king and here we have bishop to e2. Uh, we have knight to e4. Uh, sorry, putting pressure uh, on, the, on the knight here as it is a, a valiant defender of white's queen side. Knight captures an e4, f captures, and now pawn to a3 as our a2 pawn was hanging there. Knight captures an e5, d captures an e5, and now pawn to h6. And Hikaru says, I'm, uh, I'm uh, very happy here. I'm now ready to start uh, attacking on the queen side. So f3, Rajab wants to open up lines in the center, captures uh, will allow him to, to open up the d-file, c5 by Hikaru, he starts advancing the queen side pawns, with f captures on e4, d captures on e4, the bishop who still guards the e4 pawn, and but now bishop to c4 with check, we have king to h8, and now bishop to e6, here Rajab wins the d7 square, and rook to d7 is coming, so this will be very unpleasant for Hikaru, and you don't really get anything with the uh, uh, rook d8 because we'll just trade one pair of rooks and then we'll play rook to d1 attack the queen and then rook to d7 so here bishop c6 just stopping rook to d7 uh, and now king to b1 uh, always uh, an, a nice prophyla uh, prophylactic idea except when it isn't uh, queen to b8 now ready to start pushing those queen side pawns and now bishop to d5 uh, we have bishop captures rook captures now uh, Rajab of ready to double up on the d file queen to b7 attacking the rook here and the rook h to d1 we have queen to c6 uh, now the c pawn 
uh, will be defended. We have to defend it one more time if we want to start pushing the B pawn, but also we can just start pushing the C pawn. So rook to D7, Rajabov just continues with his uh, idea of putting the rook on the 7th rank. We all know how powerful a rook on the 7th can be. They call it a pig for a reason. It just gobbles up everything. Uh, and here you should play a move that is uh, queen to E6, but it's very hard to understand why until you see Rajabov's next move. So here rook F to E8 was played instead of uh, uh, putting a, a rook here to defend the pawn on e7, uh, but this actually blunders the game for Hikaru. So feel free to pause the video and try to find the only winning move for uh, Rajabov uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that the F7 uh, square is free for grabbing. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, of course, the move is queen to c4. Uh, to all of you who found this, you have just defeated one of the candidates of the next candidates tournament. Uh, but for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, that's the move. Queen to c4 on move 29. And it was in this position on move 29 that Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, so what you've done with this move, of course, you want to grab hold of the f7 square. If your queen gets here, then uh, every sorry about that, uh, then everything just falls apart. Uh, but the move that Black had to play, and now you of course understand it if you've spotted queen to c4, uh, is just uh, block uh, prevent this queen to e6 prevents queen c4, and now you are ready to start pushing uh, pushing that pawn. You could play c4 right away, but queen to e6 is more precise. So here after rook to f8, of course queen to c4, and you resign. There is absolutely nothing you can do uh, because let's say you play e6 to prevent queen to f7 it's uh, not a problem whatsoever because now you've uh, given up control of the d6 square now the other rook comes to d6 and that's it you can play queen a4 uh, we happily trade and we're just up too much material rook capture some b6 and this is of course now completely winning for black whatever you whatever move you make uh, we just win the seventh rank completely now we have two pigs here and that's it uh, we're going to capture the bishop. If you defend it, it uh, doesn't really matter. Bishop captures on h6. You can't capture because of checkmate. And, uh, well, that, that that's just it. So another thing you could do after queen to c4 is say, okay, why not just continue attacking? Is queen to f7 really that bad? Uh, it is. It's it's devastating. Queen to f7. Now we're going to play b4. Now uh, it's black is also attacking, uh, but still rook 1 to d6. There's just no stopping this move. Now you can't capture because of checkmate. The rook and queen will be going after uh, the, the bishop on g7. And the once the queen moves, uh, we're just going to play bishop captures on h6. Absolutely everything is winning here. Let's say, um, I mean, bishop captures on h6 is the only winning move. Uh, but uh, after captures, um, uh, you know, it's uh, now everything is winning. Rook captures on g6 and there is no defense. This will be checkmate. If you move the bishop somewhere uh, to, uh, to, uh, to remove it from, from the defense of the g7 square, then queen to g7 will be checkmate. If you play bishop here, then the rook no, no longer guards the g8 square, then rook or queen to g8 will be checkmate. So like I said, everything will end in checkmate here. And another thing that could be considered is maybe just rook f8. We guarded the f7 square but now the e7 pawn hangs rook captures on e7 you have a passed e pawn and there's no playing this let's say b5 we say we play queen d5 there are there are better moves here but queen d5 is uh, good enough we trade captures captures and the white is just uh, completely winning here so of course hikaru knows this after queen to c4 he resigned and a wonderful wonderful victory for uh, Temur rajabov i actually wanted to show you the first game between the two of them that, that they have ever played uh, it's actually from 2008 but the only um, uh, trace of this game on chessgames.com uh, the moves are completely scrambled and it feels like they are rated uh, 1100 the moves they're making <laughs> make absolutely no sense so I, I don't think that's the game they played so if I ever find it I will show it as it uh, you know it, it kind of looked like a like a good a good game before they started making silly moves uh, but uh, you know I, I, I really doubt that's the game uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it and this uh, little bit of extra info about the candidates, about uh, the venue where it will be played in, in uh, Madrid in Spain. 
uh, and also uh, the candidates uh, themselves. Uh, so I yeah, ho hope you enjoyed that. Then, like I said, use hashtag suggestion in the comments. If you have a nice game between the candidates, I will gladly show it so we can prepare properly for the candidates tournament that starts on June 16th uh, or rather June 17th. June 16th is the uh, opening day and June 17th will be the first game played. Uh, so yeah, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Um, uh, reg regarding all of this, uh, I would like to thank Adrian Martin Nagorski, David Kaiser, uh, Tyler Single Clark, uh, Benjamin Bogwald, and Martin Georg Paparik for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing uh, to check up on your wonderful suggestions regarding the candidates uh, and you know whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so, thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.